Hello and welcome back for another story this month. I'm reading tonight from The Marvelous Mud House. It is a wonderful story of two families, one in Oklahoma and one far away across the ocean in Kenya. And it is written by April Grady and it is illustrated by Ida Masari. Listen to the story, if you will. And here is the story of The Marvelous Mud House. On the edge of a lush mountain in Kenya sat a marvelous mud house where George and his mother lived. What made this house marvelous was the marvelous thing that happened there. Every morning as the sun flooded the great rift valley, George ser searched the terrace garden for corn, mangoes, and potatoes while Mama George milked the goat. And then they loaded their baskets on their back and began the long walk to the village. Down, down, down one side of the mountain and up, up, up the other side of the mountain they walked. And every day Mama George sang, We're rich, my son, rich in love, strength, and life. The giver of these hears every cry. Let's lift up our hands to the God who provides. One morning George could hear the children singing from the schoolhouse. Mama, he said in a sigh, all my friends are in school, and I want to go too, but how will we pay the fees? Mama George raised her eyes and replied, Let's keep working, George. God will provide. Far away on the edge of the Oklahoma woods sat a hungry ranch house where the Smith family lived. What made this house hungry was the feeling of always wanting more. The five Smith children, Olivia, Ruth, Thomas, Tucker, and Ben, had toy trains and trucks, footballs and board games, pretty dolls and stuffed bears, one brown and white beagle, and one whopping big car. The cleanup time brought weeping and whines, and with closets overflowing with toys, they still begged their parents, oh, please, buy us a little more. Then one day an adventure began. The Smith family hopped on a plane and flew up in the sky, over the land, and across the ocean to Kenya. There they saw a new world full of yawning rhinos, graceful giraffes, playful monkeys, and mischievous baboons. They saw boys selling bananas and girls carrying water on their backs. And there in a village market, the Smith family met George and his mother. Every day the Smith stopped to buy corn and chat with George and Mama George. The youngest Smith, Ben, gathered the courage to ask, where do you live? Is it very far? Mama George leaned over with a smile. Oh, we can show you. Please come to our house for dinner. So down, down, down one side of the mountain and up, up, up the side of the next mountain went the two families together. And as they passed the schoolhouse, Ben asked, Is that your school, George? His new friend shrugged. Well, I hope to go there someday if we get the school fees. God will provide, Mama George reminded. As they walked, she taught the Smith family her song. We're rich, my friends, rich in love, strength, and life. The giver of these hears every cry. Let's lift up our hands to the God who provides. Soon they reached the marvelous mud house. Ben was surprised. But George, where's your house? He said. Right here, George replied. Mama George and I built it ourselves. But George, where's your car? We use our feet, said George. But George, where are your games? George said, I'll show you. He quickly began showing how much fun it was to play hide and seek among the corn and the mango trees and make up games with pebbles and banana leaves. Soon it was time for dinner and both families gathered inside the marvelous mud house. There they sat, knees touching as they savored stew, ugali, and chapitas. George passed around sweet fried mandizis. A lantern flickered on nine smiling faces and the walls rang with laughter. With full bellies, the Smith children looked round in wonder. In the mud house, to be surrounded by joy and love was enough. 
much more than the accumulation of stuff. That night, Ben's eyes watered as he hugged Mama George goodbye. Asante, he said in his best Swahili. Thank you. Back home in Oklahoma, the children began to think about George and his mother and their desire for George to go to school. They came up with an idea. Olivia said, I can babysit. Ruth said, I can have a bake sale. Thomas said, I can rake leaves. Mom and Dad said, we will get a smaller car. And Ben said, I can sell some of my toys. Tucker said, I can stand on my head, which he promptly demonstrated, of course. And then he giggled, or I can feed people's pets. And they all sang, we're rich in Christ, rich in love, strength, and life. The giver of these hears every cry. Let's lift up our hands to the God who provides. Back in Kenya, George still thought about going to school. He planted more and more corn, but he and Mama George still did not have the money to pay school fees. He wondered if Mama was right to trust God to help. But Mama George continued to pray, Lord, will you help us? And then one day, Mama George received a letter from far away. She carefully opened it and read, You taught us so much, and we want to bless you. Please use this money to send George to school. Your friends, the Smiths. And so, Mama George began to cry, not tears of sadness, but of joy. She skipped down, down, down the side of the mountain and leapt up, up, up the side of the next mountain, and she hurried to find George. Mama, what's wrong? Why do you run so fast? George asked. Mama George read the letter aloud. George, God has provided for us, she cried. I'm going to school, George squealed, as he wrapped his arms tight round his mother and let out a great big whoop and holler. Two houses that night rang with laughter and dance, one marvelous mud house on a mountain and one happy house on a ranch. Here ends a reading from The Marvelous Mud House by April Graney, illustrated by Alita Masari. Think about when someone else has helped you. How did they do that? And how might you help someone else? Thanks for tuning in. Bye.